The following program is brought to you by Fanbags Cornhole, Chicago's official supplier of professional cornhole boards and bags. Choose from any of their officially licensed designs or have my boy Brian design a custom set using anything from a selfie to your company's logo. Visit www.fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS to get 10% off your entire order. That's www.fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS for 10% off. Step up your game with fan bags, cornhole. It's Zach Eady with the Purdue Men's Basketball, and you're watching Boilers in the Stands. Welcome back to Boilers in the Stands post-game show. I am your host, Greg Braggs Jr. Alongside me, as always, is my guy, Joe Jackson. And Craig Bowers is underneath talking to Matt Painter right now as we speak as they are sweeping the confetti off the floor. Yes, it's a late night here at Mackey Arena as Joe gives you the inside look as uh, as the dust has settled, the Purdue Boilermakers are your Big Ten champs for the 26th time in program history. Most in Big Ten conference history continue to extend that gap between them and IU. So take that, Hoosiers. This is our state. This is our house. And uh, it's a beautiful thing when Zach Eady said, you know, however many months ago, last offseason, let's run it back. You know, they had it, they 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 knew what was at stake. And so far, you know, box check number one, big ten champs, regular season. Got a couple more boxes to check, but at the end of the day, we're gonna talk a lot about this game here coming up. Last year they lost four of six to end the season, and they backed their way into a big ten championship. And you know, that it was kind of a bittersweet taste in a lot of Purdue fans' mouths because it was like, ah, you know, it's not finishing on a strong note. And Purdue lost a game here recently to Ohio State, and everyone started getting those jitters again, saying, I don't know, man, now it's starting to feel like that again. You know, uh, end of season fatigue. You know, can these are these guys going to do the same thing they did last year? Well, to this point, they go and have a few, you know, what, three games now here in a row yep. that, you know, could have gone either way at the end of the day. That's how Big Ten basketball goes. But this team has shown a lot of resili- resiliency, a lot of toughness, a lot of maturity, and a lot of talent. They got a lot of talent and a lot of depth. So we're going to get into a lot of it here yep. tonight. Uh, but, Joe, I want I want to hear your instant reaction. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about the Big Ten championship in that first, and then we'll get into the actual game. But I think there is no doubt, right, when, when we talk about Purdue this season, we talk about running it back, this was not the final goal, and it's not the final goal for any fans. It's not the final goal for any players. I don't think we should let that fact get in the way of, like, just ignoring that this happened. Like, this isn't, you know, this isn't normal. And and I'm I'm saying that as, um, for anybody that's kind of followed, right, I've been a Purdue fan for now, this is my sixth year. I, I came to Purdue in that 2018-19 year. Um, and so in my ter- my fandom, we won 50% of the championships. So it's it's kind of becoming normal. But in general, like this is not something you just glance over. Yes, it is not the final goal. There is a lot more work to be done. But at the same time, like we should enjoy this as fans. Right? And they should enjoy this as players for the night. Um, you move on to the next game after. But enjoy this, like like we said, most in Big Ten history. Like this is not this isn't a normal thing. Um, and just I 
although this wasn't maybe Purdue's best game, right? And I do think Michigan State played pretty well for the most part, got some good ones, tough ones to go. Um, this was a game where Michigan State cut it to what? They cut it to three at one point in the second half. They had a pretty big run. And, you know, I tweeted out or we tweeted out on Boilers in the Stands, our Twitter, um, that Michigan State punched Purdue in the mouth in that second half to start. And now it's, okay, this is March. This is the time where what does this team actually look like? What is this team really about? Um, and they responded. They, they don't believe the lead ever got below three in the second half. They responded. They kept control of the game. Maybe they weren't able to you know, extend it to 15 or whatever, but they took control. They did what they needed to do. And last year, when we talk about those four of six losses kind of to end the year, um, this, is, this would have, last year in that stretch, this is very easily a loss. This was... Never in my mind really, like, I was never crazy concerned. I was obviously a little concerned when they cut it to three. But in general, um, this team is just different, and, and I believe in them. I, I believe in them full, full-heartedly, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. But always good to yeah. see. Always fun to see Confetti fall from the stands. Oh, it was a beautiful thing. And and I was curious. We were all kind of wondering how they were going to do it, you know, because right now they've only clinched a share of the Big Ten title. Um, you know, they still have some unfinished business here in the regular season to, you know, finish this off. Illinois is up next. If they were to beat Illinois on the road, they clinch the Big Ten title outright. But at the end of the day, it's a Big Ten title nonetheless. Uh, so they're going to celebrate that here tonight. Uh, and there was a lot of fun. We got a lot of great pictures and videos that we're going to share with you, um, you know, here over the next 24 hours. We put a few up on the on our boilers and stands Twitter account. So if you go there, you can see a little bit of that, but I'll be putting, I'll be uploading all of that content onto Facebook and Twitter over the next day. It's like I said, it's late. I mean, we're approaching midnight already. They had the music blaring. So we couldn't start until they stopped the music and Hey, we didn't want to stop the music. Enjoy it because at the end of the day, this is Zach Eady's second to last home game. We got one more go home game coming up here. Uh, you know, next week, next Sunday, uh, against Wisconsin, but you know, this is one of those moments you just got to kind of take in because you know, at the end of the game, Zach Eady and Julie Eady, Zach's mom, you know, shared a nice hug and you know, and and you see Mason Gillis talking to his dad and getting emotional, and you know, you're seeing all these the family members kind of embracing. You understand just how special and rare this is for people. You know, Lance Jones comes in from Southern Illinois. And he's getting to enjoy it in the way he's looking at that yep. Big Ten championship trophy. These are memories that they'll be able to take with them forever. So you cherish it now. You know, I was in the press conference for the players and, you know, they asked, you know, obviously you got bigger fish to fry, but you don't want to diminish what you've just accomplished. And, you know, Mason Gillis basically said, hey, every game's every next game is the championship. You know, we just, yes, we understand the road ahead and, and where our bigger goals are. But if we just approach every game like it's our last, then we're going to understand we're going to have to play with the champ championship mentality the rest of the way. So, you know, it, I, it like I said, we've said this a few times as the season's gone on. There's not going to be any moment that's like, okay, I, now I'm not nervous about March. You're going to yep. be nervous about March no matter until, what. Until that first round uh, final buzzer sounds. It's going to be nerve wracking. Yeah, absolutely. So. You know, but at the end of the day, like I said, last year they backed into a Big Ten title. And this year they took it and 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 owned it themselves. You know, they weren't asking for help from other teams, you know, and, and this is one of the best, you know, seasons in Purdue men's basketball history. Yep. And well, it, 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 you just don't take that for granted. This is the golden era of Boilermaker basketball. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to watch. Zach Eady will be sorely missed on this court. So a week from today, when you come to Mackey, embrace that and appreciate it and understand the impact and change he's brought to this program. You know, they were already trending up and then Zach took them to another stratosphere. And tonight against Michigan State, they had no answer for Zach Eady. None. You know, and not that many teams do have an answer for Zach Eady, but he was playing with a little extra aggressiveness, a little extra sauce a couple times. Uh, he fouled a guy pretty hard one time underneath the basket, you know, and it felt like he had a little extra juice on that. And, you know, uh, some of the, a couple of the takes he had, you know, um, you know, really using that drop step to his advantage and, you know, really just, you know, uh, showing great footwork for a seven, four, 300 pound man. Like, I mean, 
it, it, he is your national player of the year again. Going to be back to back seasons. You don't get to say that very often in college basketball, uh, let alone for Purdue Boilermaker basketball. So it's exciting times, man. Uh, you know, we've yeah. got some things to get into. Maybe Craig will pop on, maybe not, you know, but we're going to. We're going to run through this and we may or may not do another show tomorrow where we share some of this extra content we have that, you know, maybe, maybe put together another championship show and see if we can't get on somebody to talk about it. Maybe even a Bobby buckets or, you know, maybe one of the players, if we can harass them enough to come on. But uh, for now, we're going to do our little post game show. Please hit that like button and um, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't already, we've made some changes, a little bit of changes to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, for those of you that do watch on YouTube, you know, we've had some people talk about like, hey, how can I support you, uh, you guys, you know, talking to us and, and Craig and Joe. And uh, so we have added this option where you can put in super chats, uh, essentially, uh, they're basically donation chats where you can put your comment up. And if you want to put a little donation to what we're doing here, you're more than welcome to. But if you if you if you don't know, you know, obviously no feelings, we appreciate everybody that tunes in. Uh, and we appreciate your support in your viewership and your likes and, you know, you passing the word around to your friends. That means all the world to us. But, you know, for those of you that were asking how you can make a monetary donation, that's one way we've started that trend. So uh, go ahead and uh, if you want to do that, go right ahead and, and throw us a super chat. So, uh, Joe, where do you want to start with this? Break down the game a little bit and, uh, you know, kind of get into this post game show. Yeah. Um, first, I think we should we should give a shout out to to one of our sponsors really quick, um, and then then as we'll we'll kind of get into um, the the meat of the game. But we have partnered with Autograph, and, and so they are an app um, currently on iOS, expected to be on uh, the Google Store very soon. And it's just a cool app. It's a cool app that will reward you for being a fan. It is completely free. Um, you just go sign up and, and use code Bits, and that will get you on the app. And so what it does is. All of your Purdue content, it's going to put it in one place. You know, there's us, there's all, there's so many good boiler upload, hammer and rails, black and gold, like all of them, their podcast articles, um, basically everything you want in one specific spot. So now you can easily go on and you can interact and, you know, there's a community and like a leaderboard, seeing how much you react, um, interact and just kind of be rewarded for a fan. And when I talk about rewards, like they just gave away tickets uh, to the Michigan State game, or there was, I believe, two packages that were given away for this Michigan State game today. There are three packages currently that will be available um, for the Wisconsin game. It's two tickets per package, 16 bucks per ticket. So if anybody's looked at ticket prices for Wisconsin, uh, for the Purdue Wisconsin game, and I have, uh, 16 bucks is a steal. And then they'll definitely have stuff for like March Madness too. They have a VIP thing going on for the, the Elite Eight um, where you could enter. You just got to sign up for free, um, You know, maybe refer a friend, and, and then uh, you'll be entered and so it's just a really really cool spot uh we appreciate sponsor or them you know sponsoring us us working with them uh it's it's a cool app that makes it much much easier to access all of your purdue sports content but if you have other college teams and potentially pro teams eventually um so yeah and if you're watching on the youtube channel you use this qr code that you see here on the screen and use the promo code bits when you sign up that's b-i-t-s as in boilers in the stands uh, so again, you'll see that promo or that QR code if you're again watching on our YouTube screen stream or or Twitter and Facebook, of course. Um, you know, obviously some people listen to us with audio. Uh, so yeah, just follow that information that Joe gave you. Use this QR QR code, and when you enter the promo code bits, you'll be in the app. It's all free, and then you have a chance to win some tickets uh, for uh, a a real discounted price. And anybody that's ever tried to get in Mackey Arena knows how hard that can be at times because yep. nobody sells their tickets in Mackey arena. They come to the games because they're the real diehards in the stands. Uh, so where do you want to take this Joe? Yeah. I mean, let's do, um, let's do like just quick run through of the stats. We don't have to linger too long. And then from there, I, there, there is probably one very, very big player that uh, we should hit on first. I would think. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well then we'll get into a uh, quick team stats. Purdue shot 51% from the field. To Michigan State's 39. So Purdue really, uh, you know, efficient is probably the best word because Purdue shot less than 50 shots on the game uh, at 51% clip. Michigan State got 64 shots up, you know, but uh, they weren't making very many shots. Uh, they made some shots at the end in the second half to make it a close game, but for the most part, 
uh, not doing much. Uh, Purdue had 10 threes and six, you know, uh, 50% from the three point line, 20 of 30 from the free throw line, missed 10 free throws for Purdue. Uh, so they got to get that back on track. Uh, they won the rebounding total 36 to 33. Uh, so some different things there, points in the paint, 26 to 20 bench points, 27 bench points for Michigan state, uh, 15 assists on 25 made buckets for Purdue. Uh, and Purdue led for 24 minutes of this basketball game. So, you know, any any specific team stats uh, that stood out to you in this game and, and a reason why Purdue won? Yeah, I mean, limiting turnovers is huge. Knocking down threes, 10 to 20 from three is also a big thing. As I kind of relay it back to our keys of the game going into the into the game. Um, first key was feed ED, and then in parentheses I had TKR. Uh, TKR got fed for the very first possession of the game, and then from there it was ED, obviously 32 points, 11 rebounds. Zach Eady's pretty good. Second key was limiting transition and secondary break opportunities for Michigan State. Um, per the stat broadcast that we used, they, Michigan State only had, I believe, three fast break points. Um, and, and even if it's off a little, it was only five. So they did a good job there. Be physical with Hall. Hall had, I believe, 12 points. So it was, it was an okay game there. Um, get going early, especially from the perimeter. Purdue maybe didn't have the best start, but like I said, 10 of 20 from three is, is going to be big. Michigan State is a team that allows a lot of threes. As Boiler Fanatics brings up here, good time for Fletcher to drain some threes as our bench didn't produce too much. Uh, we'll get into Fletch for sure, for sure. And then the last thing was stay connected on screens. Um, MSU just runs with a lot of screens, a lot of pin downs. And, and I think Purdue, for the most part, we'll get into the deeper details later. But for the most part, they did a pretty good job getting through that. Um, and then obviously, you know, turnovers, always a big thing under 10. That's fantastic. Uh, Purdue did get out rebounded. Um, a little bit, or uh, Michigan State had more offensive rebounds, which was a little bit surprising. Um, and then free throws, you know, Purdue didn't shoot great, but they got to the line a good amounts. And, and yeah, I, I would kind of leave it at that. Yeah, like I said, you know, I, I've said it all year, you know, to beat Purdue, you really got to pitch a perfect game, you know, and, and that being not just on your end, but you got to also hope Purdue has a real down game, you know, because yep. Purdue can struggle and still keep it close and or beat you, you know. And and so, you know, Michigan State, you know, obviously didn't play. You know, they, they should have been up at halftime. You know, the fact that Purdue was up on them, you know, Purdue turned it out around on them pretty quickly, and they did it on the defensive end. You know, they they, they really strung together some stops and, um, you know, kind of flipped the game because early on Michigan State, you know, was up seven, I think, at one point. In the last few games, I think, you know, I, I, I don't know how to – I don't know how to take this because, you know, Purdue just kind of wins the war of attrition every game. They kind of just wear you out. The other teams, you know, stacking up the fouls. Tom Izzo's crying all game because he's not getting away with his team just fouling everyone, especially Zach Eady underneath. And as those fouls add up, the rotations start to mess with your, you know, uh, game plan as an opposing coach. And then when you get to the end of the game, you, you know, you're just kind of tired out. But, you know, I guess if there's one key that if I wanted to get picky for Purdue to really start to pick up is is opening up games because it just seems like the other team is coming out with more energy than, you know, Purdue. And then Purdue's kind of got to play catch up or, you know, uh, fight back. That they, They're taking the first punch instead of swinging, you know, out the gate. So, you know, I, I, I've kind of been monitoring that a little bit because once you get to March – you get a team that jumps up on you 17 to seven, you know what I mean? Like the game's going to, the game's uh, it's, you know, it'll get to halftime before you know it, you know, like Purdue, you know, in the regular season, they, they can withstand that stuff. But when you get to March, you know, you, I want them throwing the first punch a little sooner. Um, but as I said, you know, the war of attrition, it just always seems to be Purdue winning out. So that's again, what happened here tonight, you know? So, um, like I said, Zach Eady played with a ton of toughness too. I, I really enjoyed watching him play with a chip on his shoulder. At one point you had Lance Jones get a tech. Uh, yeah. he's not afraid Lance, to get, you know, Lance Jones, when he ripped AJ Hogarth at the, like at the end of the game, 20 seconds left and it's yeah. a gigantic play and, and him and him and AJ are, are similar in that they are very much like, um, you know, they'll, they'll talk shit. I, I, I got no other words than that for it. Lance literally rips him. And live, like the play was not done. The ball was still live. Lance literally started talking to AJ Hogard, like immediately after he ripped him. 
And yep. if that doesn't describe Lance Jones, then I don't know what does. And then I, I love it. I, I love it because uh, – and then you saw Hogarth just kind of hack at him. And, um, but yeah. that's, what, that's what Lance Jones will do. Even if he's not shooting the ball well, he's going to bring the defense. And, and yeah, he's right a, there he's was, com- was huge. He's a competitor. There's no doubt. And, and Lance didn't have his best game tonight. You know, um, he had some – it's always funny watching, you know, guys chuck up threes and immediately looking at Painter's reaction on the bench. They may not always show that on the telecast, but Painter's always beside himself when that happens. You know, Fletcher put up a, a fast three. I thought he kind of got fouled on it. It's like a running three. Yeah. Uh, he Painter got hit from lost, behind, maybe, but yeah, Painter about lost his mind on that one. Lance took a couple ill advised, I guess, in the mind of Painter uh, threes. Yep. So, you know, uh, yeah. but at the same time, you know, you know, I don't, you know, it's not to the point where Painter's going to take him off the court by any means. Cause you know, he, he brings so much to the table offensively and, and defensively. And so he yeah. just kind of keeps coming at you. And, and like you said, that rip at the end, that was just, uh, that was huge. A, yeah. It, it, you know, just let's, such a great, yeah. Great moment in the game. Let's, let's just go to the defense and they'll kind of incorporate some of the players in that, like Purdue's defense was not perfect. There was there was def- Michigan State got on their runs, and, and so I'm not I'm not advocating for Purdue's like insane defense or anything like that. But um, I, I think when you look at Lance Jones, he got the Hogarth assignment, and so that's Painter saying like, "Hey, I, I don't want to let Hogarth get going. We'll figure it out with Walker." Um, and Hogarth has eight points, four assists on three of thirteen shooting. Like like, yes, Lance was Lance was not good offensively. He just he straight up wasn't today. Um, Lance Jones experience it happens. But he was very, very good defensively. He was in Hogard for a lot of that game, um, and and he just kind of shut him down. And he made it much, much, much more difficult for him to get looks. And then you go to Braden. This might have been Braden's best defensive game of the entire season. Like, and I say that Walker had 14 points on five of 15 shooting. Who, who he guarded most of the game, and Walker's going to hit some tough ones. Like Tyson Walker is one of the best shot makers in the entire conference. He's gonna make. He's just gonna make some tough ones. It happens. He's also gonna shake loose for one or two, and it is what it is. But for the most part, you just saw Braden completely hounding him. Um, just you know, he made life as difficult as possible for Tyson Walker. And this was a game where, um, at the end of the day, it kind of came down to what Walker could hit on tough shots. It's kind of what MSU resorts to when they really need buckets. And uh, Brain just did such a good job on staying connected on these pin downs uh, of not letting Walker get a ton of space. We'll go over a little bit of the defense stuff when I get to the board in a second, but uh, yeah, just I want to shout out that because I, this was probably Brain's best defensive game of the season. Lance was great. Lawyer was okay. We we were me and Craig were talking. Well, before you go on to the next one, uh, Shan Cox had a great comment in the chat. You know, Hogard and Walker, eight of twenty-eight yep. field goals on the night. So that, that was the defensive effort. And then lawyer, like he has four or five defensive plays where it's, he just gets absolutely torched. Like it, it, it's four or five of them. I do think for the large part, besides that, he was pretty good of trying to stay connected. Um, not allowing too many free lanes and things like that. There's just four or five plays where it's just like, yeah, like he doesn't stand a, a chance at all. Um, so th- that's, that's kind of what I wanted to get to defensively. I think the perimeter guards had to defend well, and, and I think they did for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it's a trade-off. We talk about that all the time. There's a trade-off of offense versus defense, so you just got to do enough. If you're a great offensive player and you're not the best defensive player, you've got to just do enough, right? You can't – it can't be a sieve. And so, you know, Fletcher did make plays. I mean, yeah, he got burned a few times. He's not a defensive specialist by any means. But at the same time, he was getting the loose balls. He was, you know, being aggressive and, you know, I don't know what Fletcher can be such an, a lightning rod of energy when he gets going, yep. you know, he really kind of, you know, I, I just love when he kind of lets it out, you know, and, and tonight it felt like he kind of broke through, I, you know, anybody that doubted that that would happen at some point. I mean, shooters shoot, man, he's a shooter. Yep. It wasn't going to, you know, I mean, we'll see how the rest of the year goes, but you know, I just, I, I never it's good momentum me. into the next game. Yeah, it's great momentum. And and let's see how they do in Illinois. That's a tough environment. You know, Illinois still got something to play for. So this isn't just like a throwaway game by any means. Uh, so that'll be a test for Purdue. And, um, you know, Purdue's played well at Illinois here lately. So, you know, but Illinois is playing very good basketball right now. I think they've won seven in a row or something like that. Um, maybe not. 
you know, I, I've I've had a long week, so I was, you're good. I start throwing I start throwing out stats that I may they've or won, may not be right. They've about. won three in a row. Okay, they've won three in a row. I'll just shut up. Uh, but regardless, they have been playing much better basketball here as of late, and so you know it'll be a good test. And let's see if Fletcher can continue, uh, you know, yep. the way he played here tonight, especially offensively. So, uh, you know, Braden Smith, you know, I. What more can you say about this guy? This is, you know, Zach Eady obviously is Mount Eady. You know, this is the, the national player of the year, the man that can't be stopped. But Braden Smith is just an artist out there. You know, the way he, you know, just, I just love why it's like watching jazz music. Honestly, it's like watching jazz music, the way he manipulates the defense, the way he, you know, um, uses his screener to get open. And it, it's just one of those things. Um, yeah, they've played seven in a row games. I see that Jeff Parks. Um, they have Jeff, played seven Jeff, this, this one. This one cracks me up. I can't lie. Jeff Parks said yeah. you were very close, Braggs. They played seven in a row. Yeah, I know. I'll I'll leave the stats to Joe. Uh, oh, forgive me, everyone. I'm working on about six hours of sleep in the last six days, so I'm a little delirious right now. But we're toughing it out for you, ladies and gentlemen. As Craig comes up here. Earlier, yeah. Craig and I agreed to just do a show tomorrow, so he's probably very surprised to see us doing a post game show right now. But we knew you Whoa. guys were waiting for us, and even though it's twelve ten at night, we're doing this thing. And there's two hundred people in the chat watching the show live on the air after midnight because the Purdue Boilermakers are your Big Ten champs for the twenty sixth time in program history. Uh, yep. So <clears throat> we wanted to make sure we came to you guys. And if we do another show here tomorrow when we get our wits about us and maybe bring in some of the um, picture content that we got here from the championship stuff, so, you know, because you guys saw the game end, but you didn't get to see the celebration on the court with Gene Cady and you got Zach Eady and, and, and some of the players doing com- confetti snow angels on the court and a lot of great pictures, Lance Jones, you know, hanging out with the trophy and cutting down the nets. We'll try to provide you guys – uh, an inside look to the celebration ceremony, but you know, that takes a little time to prep, but we wanted to come on here and break down the game as we always do. And, uh, you know, obviously give a shout out to our sponsors as well. So Joe, if you want to, um, let's knock out our last sponsor here and, um, uh, we, we'll call it, um, we'll, we'll bring Craig on here shortly. Do we, we do have a graphic for this as well as I do a little, um, yes, go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead and do the read and then we'll get the, We'll get the read on. So we, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Please hit that like button and um, we'll uh, uh, take a little take a little break and pay the bills here at Boilers in the Stands. So, yeah, uh, shout out to BJ Rule for, for sponsoring the show. Purdue graduate and current Lafayette resident, BJ Rule is close to 15 years experience helping buyers, sellers, and real estate investors in Lafayette and surrounding areas. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, give BJ a call or text to set up an appointment to see how he can help you accomplish your goals. Your home will likely be the most expensive purchase of your life. Have the experts with Rainey and Company at Keller Williams on your side and let BJ help you navigate this process. Call 317-345-4600. That is 317-345-4600. And yeah, we do appreciate them sponsoring us, um, helping along with this show. So um, as Craig gets on, do we want to kind of transition to a couple board things and then we'll, we'll bounce around with Craig and, and call it good? Yeah, um, I'm going to transition and let Craig handle it the rest of the way now that we kind of got our opening um, thoughts in. You know, uh, okay. like I said, I'm, I was covering the NFL Combine for a week, and my wife is sitting two rows down. There's about seven people left in this stadium, and one of them is my wife. So I got to get on the road. I'm going to let you and Craig handle the rest of the show, but very exciting. Purdue wins the Big Ten Championship. Um, you know, it's, it, I, it, I, I don't take this for granted. This is a lot of fun to bring you guys this coverage. Um, I'm very excited for March. As I've said a couple times here lately, I've already bought my plane tickets to Arizona because I believe this team is going places. Uh, we've talked about the fact that they've, you know, gone from 276 ranked in the country and three point percentage last year to number one. We talk about the maturity of Braden Smith and Fletcher lawyer, the evolution of Camden Heidi. We talk about you know the dominance of Zach Eady. Mason Gillis is the glue guy. They have so many great components of this team. The X factor in Lance Jones, and uh, you know I'm excited for where this team is going. This is a great night here. We got one more home game to go. Uh, maybe we'll have a meetup next Sunday. 
try to get that in the works and plan that maybe hang out at brokerage uh, brewery. And uh, so appreciate everybody hanging out this late at night. Uh, we enjoy you guys. Uh, we enjoy the fact that you guys take so much from what we do here. Uh, we love it a lot. We are passionate about this team. This isn't just uh, you know, something we do, you know, uh, as a media game, we're fans in the stands, just like you guys. So we want to represent you guys in the right way. So happy for all of you watching. Purdue wins another Big Ten championship. So for here, I'll see you guys possibly tomorrow if we do another show. But I'm going to let uh, Craig jump on and let you guys take it from here. Yep. So we'll... Love you, Craig. Love you too, Braggs. I'll miss you. Bye. Hey. Uh, oh, dang it. I wanted, I wanted to ask him about hitchhiking. What do you want? Are, are you I'll, tell, I'll tell the hitchhiking show. I'll tell the hitchhiking story tomorrow. We'll see you. Okay. All right. So just to kind of catch you up to speed, Craig, I would say we've kind of introed for 30 minutes. Oh, God. We talked about Purdue's perimeter defense. Okay. <laughs> um, good, we, good to know. Yep. What, what was he saying about tomorrow? Are we doing something tomorrow? We might be. You guys might. I, I mean, we're doing behind the scenes stuff right now. Apparently, you guys talked about doing a show tomorrow. When you brought it up to me, I thought you were just like coming up with the idea off the top of your head. But apparently that was talked about before. I don't know. We're doing a show yeah, right now. On. Let's yeah, let's talk about Purdue, Michigan State, because that is what the people are here for. Um, so, you know, we talked about the Purdue perimeter defense. Obviously, I don't think we need to go crazy in depth today. If we do another show tomorrow, we can always add on stuff. But what were some things that just stood out to you in general, or, or where do you kind of want to go first right now? Um, I, to me, you know, one of the things that we talked about in our keys was um, stopping transition baskets. And I don't know if you've touched on that at all or just not. Just barely yet, brought it up. Yeah, I, I think Michigan State only had a handful or a couple of, of true fast break points in this game, and I think they're – they got loose once on kind of like a, a secondary break off of a miss where they slipped behind the defense and scored. But man, you're doing good if you play Michigan State and like you can only point to a two or three times that happened the entire game. Painter in the press conference said that the plan coming in was for Lance to pick up ball, no matter who had ball, uh, to try to slow them down and then switch when they could. Um, but on a dead ball, he was always going to be on Walker. Um, but that, that was kind of their plan to stop. It was any, any time there was, uh, you know, a little bit of a break at all. Lance was supposed to pick up ball, try to stop that, that pace that they get just moving down court. And like I said, it only happened a couple of times, uh, that they got away from Purdue there. So I, I think that was huge. Uh, Michigan state. Oh my God. That's my throat. <coughs> Mich <coughs> <coughs> he got me right in the throat. Um, Mich you know, Michigan State is, isn't necessarily always the best half court team. Um, so they, they kind of thrive when they can get out and get easy baskets. So I, I thought that was huge. I thought that was probably the biggest thing in this game to me. Yeah, that's interesting to call out the uh, that Hogard was just going to pick up ball wherever because um, it felt like he was on or not uh, Jones. Zones, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say Jones was on Hogard for much of this game. It felt like. Um, but yeah, he no, was I, generally leading. He was generally, yeah the, yeah, the one that would get the outlet pass and go. So, yeah. And then we talked about, like, I I, I don't know if you agree. I thought this might have been Brain's best defensive game of the entire season. Yeah. And, and Painter mentioned that too, just, just how good he was defensively tonight. Um, yep. So, yeah, I, I thought he was really, really good. Yep. So, all right. Well, let's, let's talk about Edie because he's for sure somebody we have to talk about. 32 points, 11 rebounds, four assists, two blocks in 37 minutes, nine of 15 from the field, 14 to 20 from the line. Like, you know, Zach Edie played basketball today. Um, to me, though, it was he, and I think we've seen it much more this season. And I think it's starting to come out is he'll, he'll just, he'll show his aggression. He'll show that kind of that he has that chip on their shoulder, whether it be, you know, yelling for an and one or, or, just being a bit more physical, you know, he had three fouls today um, and a couple of them were pretty physical and just kind of like not allowing stuff at the rim. Um, and, and when we, we run out of stuff to talk about for Edie all the time, right? Because it's, Hey, Edie's the best player in the country. Edie's the most dominant, yada, yada. But I think there's just the little things like that, that he's just like, not even always just on court or uh, like 
actual basketball playing stuff, but just little things like that. It's adding up. You you see with Lance Jones, we talked about that a little bit too with him uh, talking to Hogard after the steal, but uh, just like Edie's in Edie is generational and, and that's just what he does. Like he does it most games. Um, I, I think MSU did a decent job early on of, of making life at least a little difficult on him. Um, and, but how many times, how many times have we said that this year? Yeah. You know, the team did pretty good for 10 minutes, kind of slowing Edie down and then Edie ends up with 32. You know, that, that's just what Edie does. Yeah, and it was a really solid night for him tonight. I, I thought all the way around um, another game where he only has one turnover in this game. Um, if we go back to the OSU game where he had four since then, I think he's had zero and one in the next two games. I think that's a really important piece. Um, zero, zero, shows... one. In the last three. Was zero, one. Okay, my bad. Yep. One of them against um, Rutgers. And then, you know, he, he gets used to break the press. Um, which I, I feel I feel like fans have called for for a long time, and it's one of those things like, come on, guys, quit quit asking for that. It's not going to happen. And then, and then he actually does it twice uh, today just to, to make sure they get that ball inbounds. And I thought he did a relatively decent job uh, of just doing his job in that role and not getting rushed, although the one kind of tips through his hands and goes to Braden and ends up being a little bit of a lucky break for, for a run out there. Um, but no, I mean, he, he was – really really good he was dominant he is the guy that that zach is he's just Zach. like that's that, those are just zach numbers and you know michigan state you know last year both games they pretty much just went one-on-one -on -one with him and i thought they yep. changed that up some this year where they were sending guys at him more this year um so i i thought you know to go ahead and and rail off a 32 piece tonight with a change in the defense slightly was really impressive also. Um, had that one huge, massive block where he chases Aikens down, I think, uh, from behind, and he gets that block too. So pretty pretty nice defensive night from him too. Um, and, you know, he just as, as we think about this in context, right, so Purdue's won back-to-back -back Big Ten championships, and no matter what um, anybody says, the very first goal for every single team is to win their conference. That's goal number one. And, yep. and then, you know, there's another goal to win the turn the conference tournament. There's another goal in terms of the big tournament. You know, but Zach Eady's the cornerstone of those two back-to-back -back Big Ten championships. And he, we know as, as Purdue fans, we'll hear sometimes, well, like, Purdue's only Zach Eady, whatever, whatever. And Painter kind of brought it up in the press conference today and said, you know, go back and look at any of those really, really good teams. You know, what? what is MSU's team in 78 or whatever without Magic Johnson? What is MSU's team um, without Mateen Cleaves the next time they win? Like, of course, like no shit, they're not going to be as good if you take a generational or all-American type player off the team. Um, so there's a lot to stand on there for Zach in terms of just his pure dominance over the last two years, going to be national player of the year. Get out of here with that Dalton Connect talk. Um, he's going to be the back-to-back -back national player of the year, and he's – the reason why, the main reason why that Purdue's going to walk away with two Big Ten championships in a row. Yeah, that's just that's what he does. That's that's what he's brought here. Um, and, and now there's one smaller goal and, and one big goal left. Um, and then hopefully once that big goal is achieved, we'll kind of it just won't even be a debate that Edie will be the greatest boilermaker of all time. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. We are still going to be talking a little bit more of Purdue, Michigan State. I think the next guy we got to talk about, unless you had anything else for Edie, but I. I think the next guy we have to talk about is Fletcher Lawyer, right? Yep. Um, 17 points, four or six from three, three assists, a block. I'm going to be honest, don't remember the block, but it says he has one. So uh, shout out Fletch for the block. This is obviously good to see. I mean, there's no doubt he's been struggling. He's been playing very poor for the past month. Yeah, pretty much all. Wow. The last time he, last time he shot over 50% from three, January 31st, he made... It's just February. It was just the month of February, and then the calendar flipped. He's like, oh, I'm good again. Um, but yeah, four or four of six from three, it's huge. He, and even the two that he missed was more of just kind of not even heat. I guess heat check type, but kind of forced. Um, very aggressive. Knocks down threes. Purdue obviously needs him. He is, and, and the other thing that's probably lost with Lawyer this year, um, just with all of the talk about lineups and all that, and maybe I'll, I'll throw it to you, Craig. What is Fletcher Lawyer ranked 
in three point percentage in the conference right now for Big Ten play. Just for Big Ten play? Just for Big Ten play. Say like 10th, maybe? Fourth, 46%, 29 to 63. Okay. Um, he had a very, very bad month. We had, this is obviously one game. This is, I'm not fully, you know, not going to be like, oh, Fletcher's all good now. You know, we're, we're nothing to worry about. Like, we got to see it for more, but this was a huge bounce back game for him to be able to get to that spot because Purdue's going to need him in March. Just straight up, he, he has these big moments. Um, you just hope that, you know, he's not going to have these, these gigantic games every game. We just need the the not good games to be fine games, and from there Purdue can work, um, get Heidi back in. I think, but um, just really good to see him be confident and knock down some threes, and also play seventy five percent of the time solid defense. And then we already mentioned like the other time just get absolutely burned. Yeah, um, and I think it's also important to remember in that difficult stretch, he just wasn't getting many shot attempts up either. I think there was only one game where he, you know, he got up eight or nine or 10 shot attempts and shot a really low percentage. Most of those games were on really low volume. Um, in the last press conference, Painter had talked about the fact that teams were doing different things defensively and there really just weren't a lot of clean looks for lawyers. So he, he wasn't getting a lot of shot attempts in general. So he wasn't really able to get into a rhythm. He was doing it on low volume. Um, and specifically, he said just the way Michigan State approached how they were going to handle Smith defensively and handle uh, Edie defensively, that those shots were going to be there. And, and you could see it from Fletcher. Like, he came out aggressive from the jump. And mm -hmm. as soon as he had a first clean look, he took it. As soon as he saw that first one go in, he was being aggressive not only in that shot, but also trying to trying to turn the corner and get downhill and either draw a foul or get a shot up, you know, in mid range or at the rim. So, I, I think a lot of it just had to do with the fact um, that he got some clean looks uh, based on what Michigan State was doing, and then once he gets in that rhythm, he's going to become a little bit more of a volume shooter. Yep, yeah, and. It's just that's what he needs. He needs rhythm, um, good spots, and, and I think what Illinois will be a tough game to do it, but it'll be also a good test. If Fletch can get going in that one, then you're even more confident about him in March. Um, and maybe we'll talk about Illinois if we do a show tomorrow because that obviously will be a pretty big game. Do you have anything else on Fletch? Um, I know we're trying to keep this somewhat short-ish. No, not really. Anything? Did we talk about? Did you talk about Braden? We've kind of hit on him. Like I have not really let's hit, let's hit uh, on Braden and then we can yeah. let's hit on Braden kind of a little bit in depth and then we can just touch on some of the role guys and then get out of here yeah um so yeah Braden Smith 23 points nine rebounds three assists and a steal we've already talked kind of in depth about the defense um but obviously Craig feel free to add on to that if you need to four of seven from two four of four from three uh hit a couple big ones he, he had that that big time bailout three in the first half where Nothing was happening on offense, and he was just like, all right, I'll pull up, drills it. Uh, this was not a game where the, just the way that Michigan State was playing defense, they were hedging, and then they were also just showing a lot of – They were Michigan State did a good job of kind of gapping, and, and so by that, like, when Michigan State puts two on the ball and pick and roll, right, so now Brainsmith is, is against the hedge, they're gapping, so the defenders are always, like, between two Purdue players, so that way they can kind of rotate and do what they need to. I mean, it just made it awkward for Brain Smith to have to – to get assists specifically, especially out of pick and roll on that. But he gets 23 points and, and knocks down four time, four big time threes, gets to the rim a couple times, some couple easy layups off a of pick and roll. Just really, this was a game where it's showing that Brain Smith's not only a passer. Obviously, when you talk about Brain Smith, you talk about the passing. He's one of, if not the best passer in the entire country. Um, and, and he can do that in on a you know nightly basis, but he also can score. He has now scored double figures in every game since January 23rd. Um, and like, he is the guy, like we all know Edie is the dominant. He's the national player of the year. He is the, all of that. This team in March may just go where brain Smith can kind of take him though. Um, especially as styles kind of change and all that. Um, brain Smith's got to be that guy and he can do it in a variety of ways. He can do, he can score a ton. He can have that, that first IU game where he was just shooting bricks out there, but he had like nine assists and dominated every other facet of the game. Uh, yeah, also in I, 40 minutes, he did it all in 40. He did not take a single break today. Yeah. If, if they're going to give him looks, he's going to take them this year. Um, and he's also yep. shown an uncanny ability to 
turn the corner or get off pick and roll, get to the rim. I think he had three of those tonight at different times that were just basically walk up layups. Um, I mean, not really even contested that much. So some games he's primarily that facilitator and that's what he's going to do. And he usually is still going to end up in double figures, but maybe nine or 10 or 11 points. And some games um, just the way they decided to, how they're going to defend him, how they're going to defend Zach. He's going to get more looks. And this was one of those nights where he was going to get a lot of looks and they were primarily going to use Fletcher or Lance um, to feed Zach. So it wasn't necessarily going to be an assist heavy game for him, but he, he can just impact the game in so many different ways. And in, in all reality, like he's had some better offensive games um, scoring. He's had better assist games without a doubt, but in terms of, two-way player this may be his best game that he's ever played uh in a pretty uniform in terms because because his defense i i've never seen him play defense at the level that he played it tonight um in terms of truly impacting the game against a truly impact player for the other team so i I thought it was just an incredible all-around game uh without a doubt yeah uh, i agree And, and we talked about the defense like i think he did just such a good job um, on it. And, and so, yeah, before, um, before we do get into, oh man, I don't have a stand. I was going to pull up the board, but now I realized I'm holding my mic. Can you hear me if I'm like this? You hear kind me? Of, yeah. Uh, Hold on. We got a, we got a show. Have you, have you talked oh. about the super chat yet? Did Braggs? Yeah. Braggs did early. It? All right. All right. So, so, so Braggs is throwing up the 20, 26 big 10 championship in the super chat. Um, I'm sure they already talked about it earlier, but that's another way. If you guys want to support uh, what we do, you can throw up a super chat and we will show it on screen and talk about it. Yep. hundred percent. So, and we appreciate anybody that does support us that way. Um, I'm going to try to bring up the board and if you can't hear me, just we'll, we'll scrap it and maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Um, but let's, let's, uh, I don't, I don't love this. I don't love this. I don't think you guys can let's, hear me though. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. All right, we'll do it tomorrow. I promise. Well, I'll get you guys with a couple tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we'll, let's just hit on some of the role players and then get it out of here. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of quickly bring up back the stats. Obviously, in terms of scoring, Purdue did not get much. Uh, TKR, two points. Lance, one point. Gillis, seven points. That was the only 10 points aside from the big three that we kind of talked about already. Uh, Mason Gillis does hit a big, big time three right at the end of the game. Um, kind of just secure it. Uh, and then from there, you know, it, it's uh, first doesn't get a ton of minutes. Morton doesn't get much minutes. Heidi takes his one three, um, but but misses. I thought he had, for the most part, again, pretty good defense. Um, and I do think Painter's kind of, I do think ultimately he has to be kind of the seventh man um, in some capacity. Like I think Morton is more of a specialist. And, and I think Heidi can be the guy you can rely on for 20 plus minutes if you need to. Um, but anything stand out from them. And then I guess we'll talk about Lance Jones slightly more in depth and then call it or TKR. Yeah, I didn't I, mention TKR. Yeah. I, I mean, I thought Heidi just in general with, with each passing week, his defense is getting better and better. And, and he did some really good things, uh, defensively tonight without a doubt. And, uh, painter kind of called that out in the press conference too, that he came in and looked good defensively. So that he kind of decided to roll with him then in terms of in that rotation and, you know, we we know he's got more to his offensive game than Morton. So if he can come in and be close to what Morton is from a defensive standpoint, I think he's just going to earn that rotation spot, prim- primarily on minutes. So, yep, yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, shout out JB t- for for uh, you know going in the super chat. Uh, we do appreciate that. And yeah, I I agree with Heidi. Like it's just he's going to be the guy that can give you a bit of both, and, and will be the guy going forward. Um, yeah, and let's, let's talk about a little bit more about Lance Jones. He obviously did not shoot the ball well. He shot it terribly, in fact. Uh, he was one point on 0 of 6 shooting, 1 of 2 from the line, 2 rebounds, no assists, but 3 steals. And we kind of talked about at the top, just the defense. The defense, the intensity, that's what Lance Jones brought tonight. And, and it was terrible offense, but he was 100% needed on defense. Yeah, no doubt. And I, he had one other game, didn't he, where he didn't score any points but was really good defensively? Maybe uh, he had three points in, in a game. I forget. It was the Rutgers uh, game. He had four points, but he Rutgers had 10 game. rebounds, eight assists, and five steals. Right. He, did, he didn't stuff 
he didn't stuff the stat sheet uh, tonight in those other categories like he did there. But, you know, Lance is here for a couple of reasons. One is an additional ball hander. And one is, um, I mean, shooting when we can get it. He doesn't have to be just a, a knockdown, lights out, three-point shooter for this team. Uh, but obviously, if it's there, it's great. Attack the rim a little bit off the bounce. Get out and fast break. But the other primary thing he's here to be is that athletic defender. And qu quite frankly, the, the play he makes towards the end of the game on Hogard is like reason 1A or 1B that he was brought in here um, to be able to make one-on-one -on -one plays against physical athletic guards like that uh, at a critical juncture in the game. And he stepped up and did it. Um, definitely not a game that Lance, you could tell how frustrated he was when yeah. he finally hit that free throw to score one point. He kind of gave like a sarcastic like, fist pump you know um he was frustrated and he just looked off offensively all the way around regardless of if he had time or not a couple of those shots probably didn't need to be taken at that time but when you're a scorer and you haven't put in a bucket like it doesn't matter if it's him or fletch or whoever when you're a scorer and you haven't made a shot sometimes you're going to put one up that painter probably doesn't want to see you put up and that you probably wish you could have back when you go back to the film room um but you know not a great night there but still really really good stuff defensively without a doubt yep and that's a big thing it wasn't the best defense tonight probably for purdue but i think it was a little bit better than what it's been the past few games at least for my for my uh for my eyes so um and lance plays a huge part in that and it's just so important with this game they had to shut down the perimeter you looked like you had something or no uh well i was just gonna say let's not forget either you know even though lance is very kind of experienced and senior driven here in terms of being one of the older guys on the team i don't think he's ever won a championship wherever he's been because he hasn't been to the maybe he won a regular season conference championship but i don't think he has so um he could have just been a little bit overly amped up tonight wanting to close it out and get that championship too so yeah no that's very very true so uh purdue does get the big 10 championship tonight 26th in big 10 uh and they're in the big 10 program for them um I see Mike, I think you had this one starred, Craig, said this is the last Big Ten championship that matters before we bring on those West Coast degenerates looking for TV money. Um, do you I guess the only reason I had that starred was like, we said this when we brought in Penn State. We said this when we brought in Nebraska. We said this when we brought in Rutgers and Maryland. Like, it's a cycle. Um, teams get added. Everybody forgets that they got added and kind of moves on in three or four years. It's going to be the same type of thing. You know, um, obviously it's going to be harder. You're, you know, no teams are going to play more and more unbalanced schedules, I guess. And they're just going to have to try to kind of predict from a competition level where things are going and how they want to try to pair things up. And that's a little bit hard um, in the transfer era because you never really know how things are going to pan out. And some teams can really pop up and be a lot better than you think they are. But nonetheless, uh, I, I think it's something that in five or six years, it'll just be the Big Ten, and it won't be an issue, and I don't think it diminishes what any of them would be doing. Yep, I agree. And I don't I don't got much to add on it. We'll talk about that more in the off season. Appreciate Andy Buck, or Andy Buck for the two bucks uh, for the Super Chat there. We're going to call it here. It is 1236. Um, we got some some driving to do home, but we do appreciate everybody tuning in. I also just want to give you know another quick shout out to our sponsors, Autograph. Like I said, uh, there's this QR code right here. Use it. Use code BITS. Sign up for free. Get all your Purdue content in one spot and potentially get some tickets, some, some very good tickets uh, to these upcoming games. Also want to shout out Fan Bags for you know, being a longtime sponsor of the show. And then BJ Rule for, for all your uh, real estate needs. So appreciate them. Uh, supporting us and appreciate all of you guys tuning in uh, to the show on the way out. Please hit the like and subscribe button may or may not be back tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see if, if what happens, um, but you can follow Craig on Twitter at Craig Bowers 34. You can follow me on Twitter, Joe Jackson, CBB Greg on Twitter at G Braggs 23. Although uh, I don't know if he needs to follow as much as me and Craig do compared to him, but uh, you can follow us as a group on Twitter, which is the most important one at boilers and stands. We will be on Apple, Google, and Spotify podcast as well. Five-star review. If you do like listening on audio, once again, we just, we do appreciate everybody tuning in a uh, big game for Purdue as they get their 26th ever big 10 championship, most in big 10 history as they knock off Michigan state, 80 to 74, be back potentially tomorrow with the show, but for sure Tuesday after the Purdue Illinois game, that is a 7 PM Eastern time tip on 
Peacock. So appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll be back whenever we are, and we will catch you whenever that is.